Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about a possible fall transfer portal window that could come into play in the next couple of years. I wouldn't hold your brush. I wouldn't worry too much about that one as of right now because there are plenty of coaches that are not fans of it by any means and I am not at all by uh, at all but definitely an interesting conversation especially with all of the injuries that are rolling out throughout fall camp but I wouldn't worry too much. Definitely something that we'll talk about if anything else happens with it. But let's get into some playoff hypotheticals. There are tons of things to talk about about this playoff as there are a million different variables as we head into this thing and a million different questions and how all of this is going to shake out. But let's jump in. And the first question I have is, what if a team with four losses finds their way into the field? This is an idea that sounds crazy, and I totally understand that, but there's really only one path that this can happen, right? It's got to be a conference champion that you know has out-of-conference losses and then finds their way into their championship and wins it. That's probably the only way that you can really pull this off, and it definitely would be tough to happen even regardless of that, but it is possible. And I think the two teams that I really want to zero in on in, zero in on here oh my goodness uh or florida state and clemson those are the two teams that i think it's probably most likely for this to happen to i think the big 12 he could have you know a four uh win or a four loss team in the mix up there but at the end of the day i think there will be at least a couple of 10 and 2 teams that find their way to the championship but at the end of the day let's get into florida state because Florida State, let's say, loses a conference game. They lose one along the way. It doesn't necessarily matter which one it is, but they lose one along the way. They end up going 8-4 and four throughout the entire schedule, but they go 7-1 and one through conference. They lose to Florida in the out-of-conference. They lose to Memphis. They lose to Notre Dame. That's not necessarily too far-fetched. The Memphis one, obviously, is a little bit more far-fetched, but let's just say all of those things happen. They're an 8-4 and four team. They're 7-1 and one in conference. That likely puts them in the title game, um, unless there is a big time log jam up at the top. But if they go seven and one, and say another team like Clemson or Miami goes eight and eight and zero or seven and one, it's very unlikely that anyone else is up in that group. So it's likely that Florida State would be in that dance. You just got to win the title game at that point, and then you're in. You probably won't get that by because I would have to imagine at that point a group of five team would have taken that spot, but. Who knows? Maybe you could sneak your way in there. Maybe that's possible at the end of the day. The other team is Clemson. I do think they're a very interesting team as we head into this year, but it could happen. You know, you open the week with week one against Georgia. People tend to believe they're going to lose that game. I am not making a pick right now, but I would lean that direction as well. Uh, South Carolina could be too at the end of the year, a very talented team that by that point is going to look a lot different than what they do in the middle. And then maybe two in conference, maybe even one in conference and a weird one out of a conference like App State, who knows. But at the end of the day, both of these things could happen, and it would put them in a really weird spot where maybe you're going to Charlotte, but you're going as an 8-4 and four team. You could turn into a 9-4 and four team and possibly find your way in, and it would be really weird to watch unfold. But at the end of the day, I don't necessarily think this is going to happen, but there's a real world out there where it does. There's a real world where the ACC goes all over the place, and there's a number of different teams that are struggling out of conference, and then a couple of teams just put it all together when conference play comes around like Florida State and Clemson and run away with this thing, but everyone else is still sitting back there just kind of watching two eight or nine win teams face off in the ACC title. So I wouldn't necessarily expect this, but there is a world where a nine and five team makes their way into the CFP this upcoming year. The other thing that might be a little bit of a subplot line more than anything else, and frankly, I don't know if anyone would really care about this by the time it came around, but I do think it would be interesting if the coaching picks for the Bama job faced off in this thing. I do think when you look at the hypothetical of this, it wouldn't necessarily matter to the casual fan that's watching. If you're not a fan of Bama, well, frankly, plainly, if you're just not a fan of Bama more than anyone else, uh, you won't much care about this, but it's definitely really interesting, and particularly for Greg Byrne, the AD over at Alabama. His first two picks for the Alabama job were Kalen DeBoer, who has the job now, is doing what seems to be an incredible job, but we'll wait until that thing kicks off to figure out what actually is going on over there. And then Mike Norvell. That, those are the two that had real, real shots to win this thing. There were talks about Dan Lanning and Steve Sarkeesian and a couple others, they got raises, and that's what happened. And I don't know if that was, if there was anything else to that. And I'll put it, leave it at that for the time being. But there's a world where a Mike, a Mike Norvell nine seed Florida State walks into Tuscaloosa to play an eight seed Bama. 
that would be a very weird thing. But it'd be a weird, it'd be a must win for Kalen DeBoer. Obviously, in the playoff, it's always a must win. I'm not acting like that. It, it, some are must wins and some aren't. But this would be kind of a weirder one where you got to win it not only because you got to move on to the next round, but because you're looking at, at the guy that hypothetically would be in your shoes if you weren't. So it's definitely a very interesting conversation. It's one that definitely would be a very fun day on the Bama message boards across the country. It would be really incredible. I'll just leave it at that. There, there would be a number of very angry or very happy people throwing fun at Florida State or being a bit mad at Florida State as Florida State uh, threw fun at them. So definitely would be a very interesting thing. Also, if you believe that Dan Lanning, Steve Sarkeesian, and a couple of the other guys were in it, I tend to not. But if you do believe that, those matchups could absolutely happen as well. And it would be a subplot as be- at best. Um, but at the end of the day, It would be really interesting to watch this unfold and definitely see the reactions from the fans afterwards, see if they are really mad about this hire they made instead of the hire they could have made. But definitely would be an interesting one there. The other one is a little bit more straightforward. What if we see multiple three-peats throughout this season? What if we see teams face off three different times, regular season, conference champion, and in the playoff? And obviously, the two best options here are Oregon, Ohio State, and Georgia and Texas. Those are the two that everyone tends to circle. And frankly, I believe in my uh, bracket, I have them both facing, facing off three times this upcoming year. And I'm feeling a little bit wary of that, but who knows? I definitely think that's a a real possibility. And then you have a couple other teams in the SEC that can make some noise, a couple other teams in the Big Ten, whether it's Michigan against Oregon playing multiple times, Ohio State against Michigan, Penn State against Ohio State. All of those could happen three times this upcoming season, and I wouldn't be overly surprised by any means. And then over in the SEC, obviously, it's going to be Texas and Georgia. Those are the ones that are, are the uh, you know cream of the crop, the ones that tend to have the best ability to make that SEC title and the playoff this upcoming year. So they sh- could face off three times, no doubt about it. But then Georgia faces Ole Miss. They face Bama. They face Tennessee. They face Missouri. All of those teams could absolutely m- find their way into the mix and a number of others uh, across that conference that could hypothetically this happen to. And then you have a couple others. Uh, we Old Miss LSU, Bama LSU, Florida state uh, Clemson is another great example of this so you could have a number of them and frankly I would be almost a little bit surprised if we didn't get at least one throughout this season I don't don't know if that is a hot take by any means but I do think it's one of those things that we're going to see much more often and I've been firmly uh, firm on this that it's a good thing. Uh, I understand, you know, you don't want to see Ohio State, Michigan one week and then see him the next week in Indianapolis. But if that's the way it's supposed to be, I have no problem with that. I understand it's maybe not the most ideal thing in the world, but what we shouldn't do is change seating in some way to make sure that doesn't happen. So that's kind of my big spiel there. That's something that I've kind of uh, felt for quite some time in the playoff era where it felt like some people were moved around just to make sure they didn't play again. And I didn't like that very much. But Moving on, what if seven of the teams that make the CFP are making their debut? What if it's the first time that they've made it into the dance? In fact, both those teams I have in the picture, I have in my dance this upcoming year. But this is going to be an interesting conversation because on paper, it doesn't sound crazy, right? You add 12 or you add eight teams to the mix. You have so many different teams that have fallen off that have made it like uh, Cincinnati, Michigan State, TCU, even Washington doesn't look like a real college football playoff contender going into this year. If all of those teams are out of it, it feels like there should be plenty of room, right? It feels like there should be plenty of space for people to file in. But as you look at this, you know, you have the top five teams that are always going are going to be in it at some point throughout this year, whether it's Bama, Oregon, Texas, Ohio State, or Georgia. All of those teams are going to have something to say about the playoff. But then you have teams like Clemson, Michigan, Oklahoma, LSU, Notre Dame that have all made it that are looking to make it this upcoming year. Oklahoma might be the easiest of that group to cross off the list, maybe LSU as well. But at the end of the day, all of those teams have the ability to make this playoff, and that would totally ruin this case. So What do you have to have? Who are the teams that really have to show up and really have to make some noise? First of all, I do think it has to be Miami out of the ACC. I think uh, when you're talking about the ACC, if it's a three-horse race, as some people tend to believe it, 
there's only one of those that hasn't been to the playoffs. So very much need Miami to be that team that makes that noise in the playoff this upcoming year. I think a team like Virginia Tech could help that out a ton. And then you have a number of others. I think you have a couple others. You know, Kansas State is absolutely a good uh, option here. Iowa State is another team that could make some noise and find their way. And Kansas State I have in my field. So definitely is a number of teams that could make some noise. But who's got a miss? Um, let's just say, you know, those four teams that I talk about, Cincinnati, Michigan State, TCU, and Washington, let's say they're out. That leaves 11 teams because there's 15 teams that have made it in the past. So who of those, you know, who, what seven or what six, five, or eight, six of those teams are going to be missing out and how would they miss out? Let's say Michigan has too much going, uh, leaving out the door. Let's say Oklahoma's offensive line troubles are very real. LSU's defense doesn't come along the way they want to. Notre Dame drops a couple that they maybe not expect or they drop the two that they uh, really need and it doesn't end up being that great of a season. Maybe Clemson offense doesn't really improve. Bama struggles and there you go. You got it. And frankly, that's a lot of hoops to jump through. So maybe this is a little bit tougher than I'm thinking of it right now. But I think when you look at this field, there's so many different variables, there's so many different openings. And I would not be surprised at all if there were seven teams that were making their debut, whether it's Tennessee or Kansas State or a number of different teams that could absolutely jump into this conversation. And I think it would make for an incredible, incredible playoff. Frankly, I would love it for it to be all 12 new teams, but that's probably downright impossible this upcoming year and then finally this is one that I hate to talk about but I feel like it has to be talked about big time injuries are a huge part of the sport we talked about it in the last segment but the big time thing here is what happens if someone goes down in their conference title game or they go down and say um, the game right before the end of the season and that rivalry game and they don't make the conference title but they're a shoe in to make the playoff that puts you in a really weird spot. And the best example I could come up with is Ole Miss because I think Jackson Dart is the guy, and I think if he goes down, I like Walker Howard. I'm not super confident that they would be able to reach the heights that they want to with Walker Howard. So overall, I think you look at this team with Jackson Dart. They are 11-1. and They could be you know SEC champions. They could be the number one seed, number two seed in the playoff. But let's just say in that SEC game where maybe they're up by 14 in the late late in the third quarter and Jackson Dart gets a knee injury and he's out for multiple weeks, he's out for a month, and Walker Howard's able to do enough, the running game's able to do enough to get them through that game, but then you're faced with a problem because you are a top seed, you get that by, you get a little bit of time, but he's out for a month. You're not getting him back until probably the semis of this tournament and you're going to play someone really good in that second round, whether it's an at-large from the SEC or the Big Ten or maybe even the ACC, you're going to have to be ready to roll. And it's definitely someone walking into that building saying, we can beat this team without that guy on the field. So it's one of those things that obviously you hate to talk about, you hate to talk about, you hate to put out into the universe. But with a 12-team playoff, it definitely is going to factor in. Some teams have been able to overcome some injuries. Some teams haven't. And I think there's a world where a quarterback goes down late in the process this year and things get a little bit sketchy for that upcoming team. Whether you want to talk about LSU or Penn State or um Obviously, Georgia losing Carson Beck would be huge. So it's one of those things that obviously never want this to happen. Very much hoping that this is not a factor at all in the 12-team playoff history. But I'd be lying if I didn't think it was going to be at least somewhat of a factor as we head into this thing. So definitely a lot of interesting hypotheticals. Frankly, I kind of want to expand on that. So likely we'll get back into it uh, next week because there are so many different things to get into and it's always fun to break these down. But let's get into our third break here. And when we come back, we're going to do a little bit of a fall camp intel uh, breakdown. A lot of injuries to update you on. Some that I frankly had forgotten about from about a week ago and then some that just happened that I really need to update you on. So we'll get to that right after this. So stick with us. 